and welcome to the sixth episode of AFPC Insights. I'm Annie Swingen, Director for External Relations at the American Foreign Policy Council in Washington, D.C., and today I'm joined by our Vice President for Operations and Director of Defense Technology Programs, Rich Harrison, who's going to talk with me about the significance of space. Hey, Rich. Hi, Annie. Thanks for uh, having me here with you today. Space has become the, um, the bedrock of modern economic growth, uh, societal discourse, and military power projection. Uh, the recent SpaceX launch, which was, I think, May uh, 30th or so, that brought two American astronauts to the International Space Station, which is a really big deal. And it, and it demonstrated the potential capability and, per, and partnership between the US government and the burgeoning American space private sector. And frankly, this development couldn't happen at a, at a more important time. You know, you asked me to, to discuss the significance of space. And if anyone that's watching this or listening to this, I, I want them to have one takeaway. And that's that China has a plan for space. And if the US fails to counter it, we will be strategically disadvantaged. So China, they've begun, um, you know, executing on a, on a sweeping national space strategy, which could, it could severely impact both the U.S. Uh, economic and uh, military security. So basically, the premise of this is that America needs a plan to cement its position as the dominant space power uh, in order to counter that China space strategy. Last year, uh, I believe it was in April, my, uh, my friend and colleague, Dr. Namrata Goswami, she did just an excellent job outlining why a strategy, a US strategy is necessary to counter the breadth and, uh, of China's strategic ambitions in space. You know, she mentioned that the Chinese leaders, they have, they have a stated objective of becoming uh, the leading space power by 2045. And that, that's just, it's not something to take lightly. lightly. Um, China, both China's governing structure and their culture allow them to formulate and enact long-term plans, uh, sometimes in a way that the U.S. really hasn't been able to over the years. And, and they've, already, they've already completed several steps toward achieving this uh, space strategy that they're working toward. You know, one is landing on the far side of the moon. You know, that's, that's complicated because that, there's no uh, direct communication out there. So they had to first launch a relay satellite just to accomplish the, the complicated maneuver. Um, they've also been successful uh, simulating a lunar biosphere with inhabitants uh, supported by a closed ecosystem for a period of a year and, um, and, and observed mouse embryos growing in space. You know, that, that demonstrates that there's a, a likelihood of human reproduction in that domain as well. And, and she further, she, she also discussed the fact that, you know, they're developing techniques for asteroid mining, uh, creation of nuclear powered shuttles for space exploration, and, uh, and industrial, industrialization of the moon to, to fabricate satellites which can harness space energy. So at the end of the day, China's right though. They, the, the focus on space makes sense because space is, it's still a largely untapped resource. Um, there's, there's now a consensus that the space economy is gonna grow rapidly over the, the coming decades. And I think today's space economy is around say $350 billion, give or take. But you know, major banks, and I'm talking about Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, they're all estimating that by 2040, uh, we're looking at a, a value of over a trillion dollars. Um, and I know the U.S. Chamber of Commerce estimates it to be even, even higher than that. And that's also including Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and, and others. And these, are, these estimates are predicated on the U.S. establishing things like lunar mining, asteroid mining, space tourism, I remember there was a Wall Street Journal a couple months ago, and that, that mentioned that they have, um, uh, there's a, an asteroid, for example, and just that one asteroid alone, if you were to extract material from it, it could be around $7 trillion. That's just one asteroid. And the, the Wall Street Journal article goes on to make the point that, you know, all this is only going to be possible if, uh, if, if companies believe that when they go in and perform these, these asteroid mining on the moon, whether it's the moon or, or, or wherever, or an asteroid, 
that there's going to be, um, they're going to be able to keep the product that they spend all the resources to do it. So I think it's important to note that protecting investments and securing the space domain is, is essential. Um, you know, the U.S. government and private sector, they're, they're the ones who can unlock the potential of space, but it's only going to be possible if that environment is safe and secure. So, you know, there's, there's an um, American national security, um, but we have a, a growing list of, of space big economic as, as, assets. Uh, there's a, a wide array of satellites that we've been launching, both for military purposes, for commercial purposes. Um, and these space-based systems, you know, they're, they're under threat from naturally occurring phenomena like uh, asteroids and comets, but also from potential adversaries like Russia and China who, and, and you know, those countries, they want to disrupt, uh, degrade, and destroy vital components of our emerging space architecture. So that's where the, the Space Force, which I'm sure you've heard uh, a lot about, comes in. You know, our, our newly minted Space Force there's a lot of debate about their role, but one of the things they do, they do need is a, a better defined set of objectives. And, and I'll go through some here. Um, one would be, they're, they're gonna be needed to figure out what's, what's their role in protecting the broader cis-lunar space economy. And I, by cis-lunar, I mean the area between the Earth and the Moon. Uh, and and what, what, uh, what capabilities are gonna be required for them to do that? Then we need to think about how, how should Space Force uh, defend space lines of commerce, like on or, or near the moon. And then finally, we need to identify key um, dual use uh, space infrastructure investments that, that could secure the US primacy uh, in, in kind of an extended great power competition for, um, for industrial, uh, logistical and positional advantage. So at the end of the day, what America is missing right now is, is a comprehensive national vision. We, we need a roadmap and an implementation plan with kind of a, um, you know, a multi-stakeholder approach. Uh, from, I'm talking from the private sector, from the government, NASA, Department of Commerce, uh, all the private sector companies out there, SpaceX, Blue Origin, all these people need, all need to get on the same page to ensure that we have a future of economic, uh, societal, and military dominance in space for the U.S. So with the hope, of the, uh, with hope the, the successful SpaceX launch is just the beginning of a return to uh, American space primacy. Well, thanks, friend, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks so much for having me, Annie. Take care.